In a world where every scroll is a battleground for attention, how do advertisers cut through the noise? What are some of the latest tools and techniques, some of the technologies that they're leveraging to really capture the minds and hearts of customers? Welcome to the Zista Podcast, where we invite industry professionals and academicians to answer questions that students have within a particular area. Today, we're focusing on advertising. Joining us today is Satya Nadikari. He's a creative director at DDP Dubai, has over two decades of experience. Satya has worked with prestigious brands and agency networks in different parts of the world, including JWT and OBV. Let's go straight into this session. Welcome to the podcast, Satyan. We're delighted that you're here with us today. Thank you for having me. I think it's, it's going to be really cool. I'm sure we have an exciting discussion ahead. And I thought I'll start by asking you, what do you think is the most groundbreaking change uh, that's happened in the context of creative agencies and the strategies that they create uh, in the past decade? I think, yeah, I think I've been in the industry for two decades, so I can, I think, confidently answer this. I think the most, I wouldn't say it was like groundbreaking, to be honest, but I think it was more of like uh, shaking the ground from underneath the feet of like a lot of agencies, a big awakening. And I think that happened through the advent of uh, multiple social media platforms that came along and started with like Facebook and then Twitter and now there's TikTok and Snapchat. Because of that, I think the short format content became a thing and that completely changed the way, you know, uh, clients started approaching advertising in general. I mean, obviously the traditional formats still exist. It depends on which market uh, one is coming from and, you know, the different demographics that you talk to, different markets have different, I mean, I'm sure India for example, is such a big market. So TV is still a very important medium. And I think the traditional print media is also quite active. But uh, I think social media made a big difference to the way marketeers started approaching their strategies, started planning their budgets. You know, their approach towards production itself of films and content completely changed. Something that agencies used to take for granted is no longer the case. So everyone has had to sort of introspect, look at the way they used to do things and they had to like really adapt and change. I mean, right from top to bottom, I think everyone had to change the way they uh, think of advertising in general. So I think, yeah, social media, how it actually came in and what it has become, I think would be, I think, the biggest change in the last decade, I would say. Interesting. Um, it's what is equally interesting is the way brands have been thinking about digital. So, uh, as opposed to digital being a consideration or maybe an add-on to an existing plan, which a media plan which may have centered around television, print, radio, outdoor. Uh, now, so many brands are thinking digital first, thinking about creating content for these platforms, as you mentioned, and then leveraging that same idea across other platforms. So do you think uh, more options in terms of platforms has made it more difficult to really push forward with an integrated campaign? Yeah, I would say so. I mean, the thing is, uh, what has actually happened in my opinion is, again, it depends on like who you are trying to target with your communication and a lot of brands end up targeting, they want to talk to like, they say I want to talk to everybody, but that's not really possible. So the, uh, they are... I mean, if you're talking to like a younger demographic, then definitely, like I said, social media made a big difference. And then dependent on like, for, for example, I can talk about the market in the GCC here where Snapchat is really big. Snapchat and TikTok are big. I know TikTok is not allowed in India. Right. But here, a lot of campaigns are run through influencers on TikTok, a lot of content and filters are created for Snapchat. So it is like very... You know, very strong way for a lot of brands to connect with their consumers here, especially for some of the younger audiences who are actually not watching TV anymore. They all look at their phones, they're all on their, you know, not even on their laptops, they're basically all looking at their devices and then uh, thinking or the creative strategies have had to like incorporate, it, incorporate that kind of like behavior, you know, into the creative thinking. 
So it's starting starting from the marketeers wanting to integrate that into their plans, and then agency creatives having to sort of you know think like that. So to bring that into their creative narrative. So yeah, it is definitely challenging. It's still not. I don't think everybody anybody who says they've like cracked it is probably lying. I don't think uh, it's still quite there. I mean, there are now these days. Obviously, the success of a uh, campaign is judged by clicks and views and things like that, which, uh, in my opinion, again, it's my personal opinion, where I don't think it was ever the right way to gauge the success of a campaign, you know. So, but it is data, it, it, it does their statistics. So, I guess it just was convenient for a lot of people to uh, gauge, gauge the success based on those clicks and views and all of that, but I don't, I'm not sure if that was the, or that is the right way to judge the success of, a, you know, a creative idea. Interesting. Uh, can you give us an example of maybe a campaign that you may have worked on, which was designed keeping a particular platform in mind, where you've tried to uh, really take advantage of the native features available on that platform? Oh, yeah, we recently actually did one campaign for the product is called Activia. I think it's a digestive uh, drink. I think it's a probiotic drink. Okay. So yeah, so it basically we came up with something called the Activia 14 day challenge, which essentially is that you need to have two Activias a day uh, to take care of your gut health, and it needs about two weeks for your body to sort of get used to it. So it was a it was something that we came up with, which, you know, it played on with, it played with things that you would actually need a lot of time to do in life in general, like say, becoming a martial artist or learning how to play the guitar or learning a new language. But there's something like that kind of a challenge is never going to happen in two weeks, but getting your know, gut health in order in two weeks, I think is really easy. So I think for that, we, the campaign was again, social first. It was, it used influencers to sort of, uh, push that thinking uh, forward in like a format that was native to a lot of the uh, short format media channels. Then I think we also created some filters for Snapchat that was I think recently launched where it kind of promoted like healthy eating, mixing that up with this probiotic. So yeah, the entire campaign was social first. So yeah, it's one of the recent things that we did um, you know, just about a month or two ago, and then yeah, it's long haul. Interesting. Thank you for sharing that example, Satvin. I wanted to ask you about uh, storytelling. So, storytelling is so important. You know, I mean, I think um, as marketeers and as people, we've been getting stories, hearing stories for so long. It's something that we enjoy. So, um, in terms of your approach, how do you integrate storytelling into a brand's advertising narrative? Uh, I think it's, uh, yeah, I mean, you're absolutely right. I mean, storytelling, I think, is more important than ever, I feel, because there is so much of sameness in the market at the moment, not in, not in terms of, like, the advertising, which can also happen. It's just that client products, that brand that exists around us, uh, there are very few products that are truly unique. Right. To actually find something that's, uh, you know, different, or something, to find something that is unique about product i think it's all starts with that so actually if you latch on to something if you find something it could be like an emotional benefit it could be a real product benefit it could be whatever it is that you latch on to i think it starts with that and then you try and like build a narrative to make that brand product stand out from the competition it's not easy i mean it's a lot of times it's maybe sometimes not successful but i think it is all about that about to find about finding that difference and then finding a unique way of putting bringing that narrative across to the audience so you know i mean it still always lies in digging as deep as you can to finding something unique even if it's not there then you end up sort of creating something that can actually make sense for that product or brand so yeah it's, i think that has never changed from the early days of advertising to now i think you still have to it has to resonate with the brand. You know, you can't come up with something that actually does not make sense with that particular brand and what it's all about. So even if it's, whether it's a cola, whether it's an airline, whether it's a hotel or whether it's a destination, you need to find something to talk about. I'll tell you 
we i mean i wasn't personally involved in it but my the agents then saudi opened up uh, to the world a few years ago when it was a completely closed country and they finally opened up to tourism it had like a great story to tell uh, and i think the campaign line if i i think uh, what was that line it uh, welcome to a journey you've never imagined now that line makes absolute it was a global campaign that was run out of dubai now that made absolute sense for a country that was completely undiscovered no right. partners had actually gone and explored i'm sure you must have seen that campaign in mumbai as well i think i had seen it put up on some billboards when i was there a few years ago so it was a visit saudi campaign and it actually latched on all those unique experiences destinations people food and it was true to the country and it still is because it's largely an undiscovered country it's something that people had never seen before so that was a great story to tell interesting i know uh, in terms of an example this is quite dated but uh, you know something which is etched in my memory is the incredible india campaign so i remember they show a couple of foreigners uh, traveling to different parts of india and exploring india in a very unique way and uh, they really had some really good visuals i think it was executed well and it brought a smile to most faces whether it's a foreigner or new year yes absolutely i think again india absolutely is a great actually a great uh, counter example because india has endless stories to tell right i mean i think it'll never run out of telling stories about uh, india we as indians i don't think know that country as much as no matter how much we try i think it's so unique and the sort of depth in it will always have an great story to tell but not all brands have that kind of depth so it becomes challenging when that is not the case but again it's our job to actually find and dig something dig for something unique and then talk about it in an interesting way all right i'm really enjoying this conversation and uh, you know this brings me to my next question satyan there are a lot of trends that are emerging and for advertising professionals how can they be prepared to manage these trends in the coming few years i think the biggest change that's on the horizon and it's already amongst us is like generative ai so i think each and every advertising professional in their capacity has to really level up and level up scale up at pace really fast because this is going to like hit the industry like something that i think don't think anybody has ever seen before and it's going it out it's already i mean i think ai in the public domain has been around for under 3 years now i think maybe 2 two, two and a half years i'm not entirely sure and the pace at which it has grown and the pace at which it it just keeps getting better and like more intuitive and you know i think the next 3 5 7 years i think is going to completely transform the landscape you know it is good i think it's going to be a I shouldn't be saying it but it'll probably be a bloodbath of some sort and only the tough and the fittest will genuinely survive whether it's individuals whether it's companies whatever it may be it's going to dis- cause a lot of disruption and uh, we spoke about social media earlier uh, and that's nothing people could still actually understand social media and like they still sort of made it part of their uh, you know narrative part of their creative advertising marketing life but i think uh, gen ai will cause a lot of a lot more disruption than that you know and it's it's very interesting big it's it's, it's not, i don't think everybody still knows what is possible because it is still coming in so people on can only comment on what they have around them at the moment but that's probably just the tip of the iceberg i think there's a lot more to come and i think everyone in advertising needs to prepare for it in the best way they can and i think uh, you're absolutely right when you say that uh, the sheer development you know in terms of the algorithms and the data points that they're referring to it just gets better and better and it's not just chat gpt is an example you have ai tools uh, appearing and emerging in all of the spaces in which you know, you could possibly conceive of so whether it's in terms of uh, copywriting whether it's in terms of text to speech Um, or sorry, text to image, text to video. The, the possibilities are endless, you know. And so often, you know, on social media, you see videos uh, made by by people who say, "Okay, these are the top five AI tools in this space or that space," and it's really interesting to watch those videos. No, absolutely. I mean, thing is, uh, I'm sure everybody's uh, seen those videos that were dropped for Sora, 
which is OpenAI's text-to-video you know, platform. And it is, you know, I think the only reason they're not, they haven't, I think, released it publicly yet is because of the U.S. elections on the horizon because it's just completely changes the game. You know, and it changes the game for agencies, clients, production, filmmaking, everything. So, yeah, so I think it's going to be a massive thing when it actually comes in and like unlike uh, humans who can maybe at some time maybe get bored of learning or stop learning like the AI will never stop learning so it'll just keep getting smarter and smarter I think so it's I think every individual who wants to stay relevant you know wants to uh, keep up is going to have to upskill interesting I remember you know talking to a, a person in the field of marketing and he was telling me that or rather this was a speaker who had come for one of our events in the past and he was telling me in the future your job may not be taken by AI but it might be taken by another marketer who's well versed with AI. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. I think it's not, yes, people will still have jobs but the thing is if you are the same person that you were say two, three years ago and you haven't already started dabbling into AI, relevant AI, in a serious way, then you're actually missing out. I think it's really important for in the next couple of years for people to, you know, actually get certified, learn, you know, and do it do it properly. I mean, it's about going. It's like going back to school, upskilling, and then you know, become being relevant again. As long as you keep doing that, I think you'll be fine. But if you, anyone who doesn't do it, and it's the same for us in the creative industry. I mean, like that's what I keep telling my team members. You know, I I'm a big big advocate of using Gen AI as a tool in our day to day work. So I was just telling you earlier that before we got into the call that I was actually exploring uh, that on a project that I'm actually working on that would normally probably require four to five people, but I'm doing the entire thing alone. And that is what's going to happen. So if you're equipped, if you are able to teach yourself, and there's enough and more stuff out there and you just keep ha you have to just keep updating your, how do they say, you need to just keep updating your firmware as you, you know, as new ones keep dropping, you'll you'll have your V1, V2, V3. You have to keep uh, updating your operating system and you'll be fine. But I think you have to. If you don't, then you're going to be, you know, it's going to be obsolete. You'll be, what was that, you know, what are those, uh, yeah, you'll probably be Nokia. <laughs> Thinking self. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's really, a lot of I mean, I think it, it is, it, 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 it is. <laughs> I'm be joking about it, but like, yeah, it's like a serious thing. And I think, uh, no one should actually take it lightly. I mean, it's 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 going to be very very interesting and challenging because I, I know for a fact that even the advertising group I belong to, we keep getting emails about trainings and uh, things of things like that about which uh, constitute Gen AI. So everyone is taking it seriously. No one is sort of no one. Maybe companies are trying to like create their own versions of it because everyone is conscious of the disruption that something like this can cost to them, the clients, the you know, the business in general. So I think it's like I think it was uh who's I don't remember where I read it or some one of these uh did Sam Waltman say it, I don't know. But an individual or like one or two people can actually uh become a business in themselves because they don't have to probably hire ten other people, twenty other people. You know, very few people will be eventually be able to do uh, everything that like the entire team was doing. And this will happen across sectors, but right now we're talking about marketing, creativity. So definitely same thing with Apply here. Glad you brought that up. And uh, you've also given us some tips on how we can prepare uh, our sense for the next few years, uh, very clearly uh, update and upgrade yourself or risk becoming obsolete, adopt the new trends, uh, embrace AI with open arms. So all of these are really good points that you brought up here, Satyan. Thank you for that. I want to ask you um, in terms of some of the common challenges that advertiser professionals may face today and uh, how can they overcome that? I think uh, the challenges, I think, uh, at least again, uh, in my experience, because I have been in this market now for so many years, has uh, uh, largely been about the change of like platforms Sometimes uh, the changing goalposts that clients have, uh, everyone wants these days, I think, 
that long term brand building storytelling is not so evident anymore everyone wants those quick wins so i think agility is really essential because everybody wants to like uh, bad, uh I'm, i'm not saying those things are not important of course those are but i think everyone's under uh pressure to deliver uh, get those rois get those uh, numbers so i think the clients are under pressure agencies are under pressure so i think those quick wins have uh, become really important and i think those put a lot of pressure on everyone from again from top to bottom to be able to uh meet those needs meet those requirements so i think uh being agile being uh, multifaceted uh being uh, you know uh, we can't be can't have old school thinking because i've seen i've seen like the careers like you know go nowhere if for individuals who've not sort of uh, kept up i think but, and they might be senior individuals they might be juniors who you know just coming into the industry i think uh, because of the expectations that the uh, consumers have or the the market has it's very very uh, agile it's extremely um uh, like keeps changing i think the the rules keep changing uh, a lot these days so but the foundation the thing is like the uh, the foundation of marketing and creativity never changes so if i think it's very important for individuals to uh, actually have that solid foundation and then keep building on it and then i think most people will be okay so that i'm not trying to sort of uh, but i think this happens in every industry right i think when the computers first came in when people used to do things by hand and everyone thought like it's going to take everybody's job then you know something else happened and people thought they they are not going to have jobs anymore the same thing will happen with like uh, ai or anything that actually changes you have to adapt if you don't if you're stubborn and you don't want to actually change and or you're not aware awareness of how the world is changing is i think really essential beyond the industry about to see how the society in general is changing i think it's very important for people in the industry to be very very aware of the world around them and then that usually reflects in the on the industry itself because those changes eventually trickle down into you know uh marketers uh needs and the agencies what they have to eventually do i like some of the points you made here satyan so one thing that i think will stay with me is that uh building that solid foundation having that foundation is so critical because some things may not change however the things that we see around us are constantly changing so staying abreast of that is super important and uh, in that context always having a learning mindset is also therefore really important. more now more than ever i think uh, you know i think this uh, these changes have really had, like i said shaken people up a lot i think and it maybe the industry did need that shaking up uh, because i think people were posting uh, so i think if you take this in a positive way then actually use that but personally for me i think it's very exciting i really enjoy reading and learning more about uh, new things that are happening in the industry and i think it's uh, we must uh, embrace it so i think uh, change is a constant and i think you might as well enjoy it there's no point being scared of it or like worrying about it because it's still going to happen so there's no so you don't you might as well sort of get into it and like uh, you know go with the flow your base is such an exciting hub like the buy and you're doing well so you know uh, kudos to you you did a good job and you can only do that can you to do that good job can you to be a good performer it's because of the the attitude and the mindset that you bring to the table and as someone in a leadership position i'm sure you're also able to extend that that thought process that thinking to your team and therefore you're able to deliver good work to your clients absolutely i mean i'm I, i'm let's see i think uh, what i think uh, i do feel i have in in spite of being in the industry for over two decades is uh, that inquisitive mindset that you know always wanting to learn and i have a bit i have a passion 
for creativity in general. I have a passion for uh, exploring new things outside like my industry. And that's very, I think that's very important, very critical for any creative minded individual. I would not say a creative individual, not someone who's like an art director, copywriter or any of those roles, but just a creative mind an individual who wants to be in the advertising industry, I think you need to be a creative minded and you cannot be, uh, uh, you know, you cannot be a project manager who has no passion for creativity and advertising. I think passion for creativity is essential. You know, you might not be the one actually doing the work, but you might be the one actually selling that work into the client. You might be the one who has to uh, sort of uh, bring those insights onto the table the creativity comes to life in many, many different ways, but actually having, because in advertising at the end of the day, the product that we sell is uh, the creative idea. So everyone associated with that idea, no matter at what level they are, I think it should be passionate, should be inquisitive, should want to, uh, should uh, have that sort of open mindset to absorb new things, new ways of working, learning, as long as you're that person, whether you're like 20, 40, 60, doesn't matter. I think, uh, you know, it's very important to have that uh, mindset. And I think I'm lucky to sort of still have that energy and drive, uh, which is what I think I hope I can like, uh, you know, maintain that. Then it's not that there has been, there have been challenges, but I think it's important to sort of have that uh, steady, positive mindset and because nothing is forever, everything, you know, life goes up and down all the time, but you should be able to uh, ride those uh, waves and notes and you'll be fine. Great. I really enjoyed this discussion, Satyan. Thank you for making time in your day, for joining us on this podcast. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Oh, it is. It's great. Really enjoyable for me as well. Thank you for having me. There's so much that we learned today. Having a solid foundation yet keeping your mind open, being agile, adopting new tools, techniques and technology is critical to your success. I hope you enjoyed this session. Subscribe to our channel on YouTube to get notifications as and when new content goes live. Our handle is Zista Podcast. Follow us on platforms like Google Podcast, Apple Podcast and Spotify. This is your host Amit Ahuja signing out. If we meet again, we'd say stay curious.